Welcome to the stand, Sheriff Center. Let's start by taking a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. C Mac, get us going. Well, for Utah, adore, adore. What's not to like about this long athletic player who led the Pac 12 in kills and is a first team preseason pick again? Powerful and versatile. She is the real deal. And for Hawaii, maintain Mo. Two straight wins have helped the confidence levels of everybody. Retaining that confidence against another quality Pac 12 team will be a key tonight. Hawaii coming in two and three on the year, winners of their last two matches. Utah four and one, and we're playing volleyball at the SSC. Anai gets the opening set, dug up by Savannah Kahakai. Outside set, McKenna Granado put some heat on it, but it was dug up nicely by Bailey Choi. Free chance here for Hawaii. Kahakai, bump set, Granado over the double block. Anai scoops that one up. She'll get the swing from off the net. She puts it through Hawaii's proposed block and gets it down. One of many times that we will call Adora Anai's name for sure. Here are the Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Already Anai with two swings there. Dug one time, slipped it through the block the second. One hand set by Yosia to Sky Williams. One hand dig by Bailey Choi. There's a dig in the back row by Castillo. Kendra Kelsch takes a crack at it. Utah Block getting a lot of early touches here. Here's Anai on the outside again. Tried to go line, but was denied by the net. So a kill moments ago, now a hitting error for Anai, and we're not at a corner. A rare error from Anai, who's hitting 382 on the year. We'll see her hit that, that many balls into the net. She touches 10 feet and grabbed the rim, so she'll go over the block more times than she will hit into the net. Middle set. And that's Berkeley Oblad getting it down, one of the tallest players on the floor, 6'4 junior from Henderson, Nevada. About gaudy percentages, she's hitting 408 on the season. So two serving one, and here's Kristen Abels, 5'9 freshman from Chula Vista, California, in to serve. You'll see it goes high and away to Casey Castillo. She bounces it off of the Terraflex. We're tied again. Smart set by Yosio that time to go to the 6 3 Castillo, who took advantage of hitting over the, the uh, 5 9 setter for Utah, Bailey Choi. Nice mismatch out there for Hawaii. Savannah Kahakai now the libero to serve. Tough serve down the line. Step out goes to Oblad. Block got it good. And Utah scrambling to return it. Now they'll slap it across. Chance here for Hawaii. Outside, Castillo. High hands, got a piece of the block. Now Anai, she goes high hands as well. Right there is Granado. You'll see it goes middle, Emily Maglio. Good dig there by Brianna Dorman. Anai, hard angle that time, got it to go. Prolific as they come, Adora Anai averaging 4.82 kills per set. And she will be the all-time kills leader in Utah history before this season is over. Only needs another 188 to do that piece of cake for her. Probably get to the top of the list in attempts as well. Yes. Three serving two, here she is serving. Attacks Castillo. Bump set from Maglio. And the dig there by Abel's chance here for the Utes. Maglio, solo stuck in the middle. That's what Emily Maglio really does best, I think. I mean, I like the way she attacks the ball, but I like the way she blocks the ball even better. Penetrates over the net, puts it straight down. Good read. And that's one of the categories Hawaii has a distinct statistical advantage over Utah. Hawaii averaging 3.1 blocks per set compared to 1.9 for the Utes. Oh, that set a little tight to the net. Good cleanup there by Granado to keep it alive. She'll get the smack at it from the back row. Dug up by Dorman. Right there is Savannah Kahakai. Oh, that bump set tight to the net, but Casey Castillo able to make it work. We saw some great defense in that sequence. Hawaii winds up with the point. Both sides playing some pretty good defense there. Claire Marie Anderson, a little tight set there, but Castillo handles it quite nicely. So a couple of kills for Casey Castillo on four swings. And here is Claire Marie Anderson back to serve. As an ace, has one service error in her serving stat line this season. Step out goes to Oblad. And Oblad off with one foot is pretty tough to stop. 6-4, she'll be a mismatch for all of Hawaii's left-siders, for sure. She is now back to serve. A tough server as well. Sends Anderson backtracking to retrieve it. Castillo from off the net. Blocked out a piece. Choi goes middle to Tony Luofalimana. 
but she misses wide, and it's a point for Hawaii. Lua Falimana, one of the three seniors on the squad, six foot from Carson, California. She's hitting 550 in this tournament. Of course, this is the true championship in the Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic. Both teams 2 0 here in this round robin format. How about her sister singing the national anthem? Yeah, not too shabby. That's pretty special. High and away. That set went to Truman in a diving layout save by Anderson. Touch over by Granado is dug up. Truman again, high hands. Right there is Castillo. Advantage Hawaii. Slide to Mays. Dug up in the back row by Anai. She'll get the set from the back row. What a save to Hawkeye. You'll see her tried to catch him napping. Truman again blocked back. What a sequence we got here. Chance for Hawaii. Kahakai back bump set to Granado. Oh, nice pick up by Dorman. And we play on. Granado again had to touch it over. Utah scrambling and a free ball coming for Hawaii. Can they end it here? Maglio, yes. And both teams playing some terrific defense. Dorman with a great dig, and here's Anderson with a great dig in the end of the, the, the uh, rally with Maglio, as you called it, by the way, clearing that ball. Kahakai had a one-handed gem in the midst of all of that as well. Castillo sends it long. Freebie there for Utah. You know, one of the times you do not want to serve out, there's certain cardinal rule times you don't want to serve out. Obviously, set point, match point, after a timeout. After a long rally like that, you got the other team that's down a little bit, and you've got the momentum. That next serve's got to be in. That's a microcosm of one of your Kaiser Permanente keys to the match, right? Maintain momentum. That's within the exactly. match itself, too. Exactly. It's a microcosm, exactly. So here's Bailey Choi out of Iolani with the serve. Slide goes to Maglia, blocked back. And the free ball sent the way of the Utes. Middle set. Lua Falimana got into that one nicely. And we are tied at six. Three players from Hawaii on this Utah roster. We have mentioned Adora Anai, the setter Bailey Choi, sophomore out of Iolani. Phoebe Grace, like Anai, a Kahuku alum, but a freshman has not played yet here in 2017. L.A. Greeley with the pass there. Bump set to Granado, blocked and roofed. So three straight points scored by the Utes, and they jump in front 7-6. Now the Utes have momentum. Hawaii's got to do something to slow them down. If they don't get a, a side out here, I think Robin Amo's going to call an early timeout. Greeley pass tight to the net. But Yosia was able to win that joust for the most part. Now Hawaii on the attack. Granado off the block and out. Good poise from McKenna Granado on the outside. And she asked for an inside set there, and she got it. Both blockers chased her inside, then she hit the outside blocker's moving hand. Smart play. First kill for Granado on her eighth attempt. So trying to swing her way into things here in this opening stanza. Lua Falemana again just tearing into that set from Bailey Choi. She has some pretty significant lift off of the Terraflex. She really does. No wonder she's hitting 436. Looks like she can't even make a mistake, although she did hit one into the block. She's hitting 333 right now, but for the year, 436 is a giant number. Those are Maglio-like numbers. We'll see you outside. Granado down the line and in. Two straight kills for McKenna Granado. Granado tops on the team. 3.58 kills per set. Hitting 212 on the year. Of course, it was a week ago today that she went for 29 kills and a career high 19 digs in that five set marathon against UCLA. Kels couldn't put down the overpass. Now Danny Barton, the southpaw, hard angle in. Oh, Hawaii wasted one right there. It was right in the palm of their hand to get that point. Well, Kelsch just does not go up high enough or press over far enough to tap that down. Wasted, basically wasted to see his serving rotation. So nine serving eight. Dorman with the serve. Two-handed by Granado. High and away the set to Kelsch. Blocked and roofed. And Utah jumps up by a pair. That's a big block over there. Barton at six feet.
on the line. That's tough block there. We'll see a backside. Granado blocked and Roof. This time on the other pin, it was a nine right next to Oblad. And the Utes have something going here in this mid portion of the first set. This is a concern of, of uh, Beth Lanier. She told us before the game, she's worried about her block a little bit. They're looking pretty good the last couple of plays. Great blocking rotation for them with all with their brought up front, 6 4. Williams didn't get the touch. Kind of a paintbrush action on that set, and Utah up 4 a 4 0 run. And yeah, already three total team blocks for the Utes. So well above their average here, and we still got a lot to play in this That's opening That's their weakness, watch out. <laughs> we'll see ya. Outside, Kelch blocked and roofed again. Well, it has been a block party through two matches for Hawaii in this Rainbow Wahine Classic, but right now, the Utes putting on an exhibition at the net. Pushy Oblon, she's been in on all the blocks at 6-4. She is a presence up front. Hawaii trying to apply the tourniquet here. Granado, the dink, diving save, Anai, that was pretty. Free ball coming here for Hawaii. Can they make it count? Williams in the middle, not a good contact. Backside, Barton, the southpaw strikes again. And the run continues for the Utes. Robin Amos Santos pointing to the bench. And she's gonna bring in another freshman to replace Sky Williams. Sophia Howling will check into the match. Need to slow things down. Have Sky Williams come out, come out and talk to Angelica Lindquist as, she, as she's doing right now. A little more sense of what's going on as far as that block goes for Utah. Well, we're trying to get out of this mid-set funk, finding themselves down by half a dozen. Granado, that's a way to do it with some thunder from the outside hitting position. Block was well lined up on her. I can't believe she hit the ball inside that block and down. Kenna Granado out of Punahou School. So many connections on both sides of the net, especially among the Hawaii contingent. Many of them playing club volleyball together. Middle set. That is a roof. As Berkeley Oakland got turned back by Sophia Howling. Even Robin Amos substitution looked brilliant. <laughs> She's been looking good attacking the balls that have been coming her way as well this weekend. Alas, service error by McKenna Granado and Utah gets to 15 first. So a timeout on the floor. The Utes putting on a run. Hawaii trying to keep pace. Well, this was supposed to be one of the Weaknesses for this Utah Utes squad. Not so much here in this opening set. Four total team blocks for Utah. And they lead 15-10 out of the timeout, Chris. Only halfway through the first set, they've got double the productivity they normally have in blocks per set. Make the dream of educational reality for our student athletes. Visit HawaiiAthletics.com and click on the donate button in the Ahahui Koa Anui Nui banner. Castillo taking a swing at it from the outside. Here's a nine. The double block was late, trying to cut the angle and missed it wide. So a couple of unforced hitting errors by Adora Anai. And you wonder, she's a Hawaii girl making a homecoming visit, if you will, for the first time in her career. And so I imagine there's some exhilaration there. I would totally agree. And some nerves going on, but watch for she's such a great athlete, comes from such a great athletic family that she will definitely turn it around. She'll probably end up with 20 kills at the end of the night. But a slow start for, for sure. Old lad picking up some of the slack, though. Once again, getting it down on the step up. Old lad's been on the USA Youth National Team at 6-4. All, all Pac-12 frost team, honorable mention. And she's got, she's got game, and she's a presence up there for sure. Carly Truman, another senior, back onto the floor for Utah. Here's Castillo, got that sequence started with the pass, forced the overpass, and Emily Maglio able to gobble it up. Now there is an overpass and put down, finally. Hawaii's been lacking in that, I think, the last few nights. It's something they can get much better at. And Marie Anderson to serve. This is another area that Robin Amos Santos stressed this weekend against Utah as they were preparing for this. Remember, they had the day off yesterday 
giving way to the UH football team and their win against Western Carolina, but she stressed trying to serve tough. We have already seen Hawaii now with three service errors in this opening set. And then the result of trying too hard to serve tough. One set outside, here's Truman, blocked and roof. Emily Maglio and Noreen Yosia saying, uh, Ole, and Hawaii within four. Hawaii picks up their second block. Good penetration by both players, good timing. Truman, a solid player who Ben Fournier thinks has to have a big match tonight in order for the Utes to be successful. Casey Castillo with the serve, it's an ace. And that was another suggestion by Robin Amos Santos and his coaching staff. They're going to try to make Adora Anai work a little bit in serve receive. They found her there, and Hawaii within three. It work strategy work there. Attacker again, this time a perfect pass outside Truman. Wow! She jumped into the stratosphere. I told you she's got hops. I, I, I try to get your attention during the warm-up. said, watch this Truman jump. She gets up. Fifth year in this Utah program for Truman. Redshirted in her first season in 2013. And a couple of players colliding. It's Anderson and Greeley. And the swing from the outside goes wide by Granado. That's scary because that's almost a flashback of how Greeley tweaked her shoulder in a scrimmage a few weeks ago, colliding with none other than Claire Marie Anderson. Robin Amos Santos taking a timeout. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Kaiser Permanente, and Island Air. Welcome back, Utah by a handful out of the timeout. 19-14 here in set one. Slide goes to Emily Maglio, and they were able to execute that to perfection. Finally, they got a ball pass, number 17 for Utah, Brianna Dorman. She's been digging everything back there, but Maglio goes high and hard and over Dorman's head. Now that step out has been getting a little bit better here in week two, and Maglio looking comfortable tonight. Three kills on six swings. Outside, it's Barton. Dug up by Anderson. High and away. It's Granado. High hands. What a layout saved by Dorman. But for not. A one against the point. And they're back to within three, making things a bit more interesting here at this late stage of set one. Not sure what Robin Amo Santos had to say during timeout, but whatever it was, it's working. The largest lead of this opening set was six for Utah. Gianna Guanasso sending it across. Middle set. Lua Falemana caught it back. No touch at the net. Point for Hawaii. And they're within two. Timeout this time taken by Beth Lanier, head coach for the Utah Utes. And that brings a little bit of a rise out of the crowd here at the Stan Sheriff Center. A rare error from Utah's highest percentage hitting player, Lua Falemana. Utah coming into tonight ranked 22nd in the latest ABCA poll. Hawaii, of course, out of the top 25 rankings in a rare instance. Tonight's Jack Fact. I guess this afternoon's Jack Fact to be more accurate. How about a nail biter? The first five matches of the 2017 Hawaiian Airlines Rainbow Wahine Classic have all been three set sweeps with an average score of 25. 16, yes, and in fact, yesterday, the other two teams in this round robin tournament, South Dakota and Western Carolina, played their final match of the tournament, and South Dakota pulled off a sweep in that one. Let's check in with Ryan Kalei, Suji Ryan. Hey, thanks, Kanoa. Head coach Beth Lanier talking to her team specifically about trying to find a way to stop McKenna Granado. She's saying, uh, McKenna Granado trying to hit inside of our block, challenging our middle blocker. So make sure to drop your hand and take away her cross court. On the Hawaii sideline, head coach Robin Amol was not happy in the first two timeouts, simply stating to the team, do you want to play? Do you want to be out here? Uh, this last timeout, much more tactical as they talk about their blocking assignments. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah, we could actually see and hear much of what Robin was saying in the huddle, and she was imploring her players to just emotionally plug themselves in, making a little run here at this latter stage of set one. She's like a Xerox copy of last, last Sunday's emotion, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. The UCLA emotion, emotion. I think that it's clear this is a big match for Hawaii as they try to carve out their identity here in 2017. 
This could go a long way. Truman blocked in the roof. You'll see us, says you'll see you later. <laughs> I like that, Canoa. Nice call. Watch you'll see her move her block in, take away that cross court. Truman really had that seam wide open, and all of a sudden, you'll see it closed it up. Hawaii within a point. Guinasso, the short serve. Bump set, left side. Truman sends it long. Point Hawaii. And they have come all the way back to tie things up at 19. Down six at one point, in case you just joined us. And a 5-0 run. Gianna Guinasso at the service line. Floats it over again. Set outside. It's Barton. The touch. Right there is Anderson. You'll see ya. Outside. Granado. And Hawaii jumps in front. How about Guinasso serving? She's sure she's serving a little yo-yo. She's got a short one, then a long one. She goes the other side of the court and serves. She's doing some inspirational serving right now. She's tactical, smart serving. And she's one happy little Disney camper. There's another happy camper right there, Dave Shoji looking on. You know, the Utah Utes have a Shoji on their bench as well. Dave's niece, Malia, is an assistant coach on the team. So not only the Hawaii connection on the roster, there is Malia Shoji, uh, but also when you have a Shoji on your bench, that probably bodes well for you. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Shoji on your bench in the stand sheriff center. <laughs> Her dad is uh, Tom, mother Chris, Tom, Dave's brother who coaches at Willamette. He's been there for a long time. Not 42 years, but he's been there for a long time. Great coach, too. Well, let's take a look at the series record sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. Utah has never beaten Hawaii for what it is worth. Hawaii leading the all-time series 11-0, but you got to go all the way back to 2004, the last two times these teams met. It was a non-conference game on the heels of Hawaii's Western Athletic Conference tournament performance in Reno. They stopped off in Salt Lake City, Utah, part of the Mountain West Conference at the time. And Hawaii able to come away with the win. Well, these two teams playing some kind of defense. Utah hitting .030, Hawaii hitting 105. Those are not gaudy numbers, to say the least. Utah normally hits 342 on the year. They're 300 points below their average. But the senior from Huntington Beach, Gianna Guinasso, getting this run going for Hawaii. The touch by Lua Falemana is sniffed out. Middle set, howling block, but she pumps it up. Here's Granado, big swing. Granado, another great serve by Granasso to get it started. She had Utah out of system from the get-go. Well, maybe it was the early start time. Hawaii a little bit late in arriving here in this match, in this opening set. They sure have arrived, though. And Gianna Granasso leading the way from the service line. They Truman lead by comes two. Out. Truman comes out, gets the hook. Shannon Scully comes in. Middle set, Lua Falemana. Again, hits it long. Unbefuddled. A lot of self-inflicted wounds by Utah. And some inspirational play by Hawaii, led by this young lady, Jenna Quinasso. What kind of a serving exhibition is she putting on a clinic? Now 10 hitting errors for Utah in this opening set. And that's an ace by Gianna Quinasso. Quinasso has led a nine-point run for the Rainbow Wahine. She's had eight serves in a row. There's another little short serve. It's been causing the huge trouble outside. Scully dug up by Greeley. Back bump set to Granado from well off the net. Chance here for the Utes. They're looking to apply the tourniquet. Barton does. The six-foot freshman from Sandy, Utah, to Brighton High School. But what a job by Kiana Guinasso. Baby G coming through. And she hears it from the fans. Look at those big smiles. The fans love it. Notice all that time, Adora Anai was in the back row for Utah. I guess where she is now. Just rotated to the front. And a service error by Shannon Scully, who was just inserted into the rotation moments ago. And it's Aloha ball for the Rainbow Wahine in this opening set. They trailed by six at one point. Hard to believe. 
And Mourinho Sia to serve. This is boys, arguably their best rotation. Good pass there by Anai. She'll get the set on the outside. Goes down the line. You'll see a scoops it up. Back bump set to Granado. And on the right side, it's Barton. Dug up by Yosia. This time it's Kelsch. High ball set to Granado. Dug up by Dorman. Anai from the other side. Blocked out a piece. Yosia has some options. Backside. Kelsch against the double block. Dug up in the back row by Scully. Here's Barton again. High hand. Two handed in the air by Greeley. Granado a third time. And Hawaii roars back in the opening set to take it 25 20, thanks in large part to a 9 0 run late in the deal. They'll swap sides. The crowd at the SSC loving it. McKenna Granado leading the way. Seven kills on 20 swings, hitting 200, and she turned it on in the back half of that opening set. Well, Granado, who averages only like 3.7 kills per set, doubled that productivity in this set by getting seven kills. Wow. You know, the real hero, though, I think, was Gianna Granasso. The real hero of that first set. Eight serves in a row, and she did it from different parts of the court. She mixed up with this, the temp over serves, how far they went over the net, uh, to different players she moved around. Somebody might be giving her passing uh, locations as well, I'm not sure, but she was the real heroine of the first set right there. No argument there. Let's check out the first Hawaiian Bank top three. Big West service aces, speaking of the service line. Noreen Yosia leading the way among Big West players with 11. No real surprise there. She is one of the great scorers from that service line. But Gianna Guinasso showing you don't need to have a fireball jump serve to be effective. I mean, she's basically sending lollipops over there, but she varied the distance. She moved along the service line. She picked on different players. She had great tempo on her serve. That was some kind of serving. That was, that was really fun to watch. Eight straight serves, part of a 9-0 Hawaii run. They trailed by as many as six in that opening set. And in that instance, that 9-0 run took them from down five to up four. And they would take set one 25-20. So now for Utah, they've got to pick up the pieces of a very disappointing finish to that opening stanza. Exactly. And they, they've got to, uh, Hawaii's got to be careful about having so maybe a woken sleeping giant. That's what they've got to be careful about. Utah hitting .024 in that first set. Hawaii. 133. Yeah. Both anemic numbers <laughs> on offense. Here's Granado. Double block up. Double block. Sends it back. Barton next to Lua Falimana. Interesting substitute. Skyler Williams started and then Howling came in after one point. And Sophia Howling getting the start here. In set two, off the slide, couldn't put it down. Choi goes middle, Lua Falemana ripping into that set from Bailey Choi. After some uncharacteristic misses, she had three misses in that first set, very rare for her. That looked like an angry attack there, making up for those three errors. Yeah, there is a certain look among some of these Utah players. And Marine Yosia wins the joust at the net. So you have Yosia, who at 5'11", she is listed against six foot Tawny Lua Falemana, winning the battle. Her timing is impeccable in these situations. She wins that joust more often than not. And the key is getting the last push. Having a little bit of that strength helps as well. Here's an eye from the outside, dug up by Kahakai. That was sweet. Granado the dink. Right there is an eye. So they go backside to Barton Block. Oh my goodness, what a backside block there. I'm not sure if Kelsch got it or Howling got it or both of them, but whatever it was, it was an amazing block. There's the great dig by Kaakai on the first one. There's the block there. Yep, it was Granado that got it. Back to live action. Granado from the offensive perspective. 
gets a taste of her own medicine, Lua Falemana. Getting her fingerprints all over that one. I think the word, the name Granado was probably mentioned more than once during the break. I'm sure that uh, Beth Lanier does not want to see Granado get 29 kills against her team. Castillo has to bump set left side to Kelsch, and she got under it. So a point for Utah, and things starting off in the second set, very similarly to what we saw in set one. Utah dominating early, Hawaii coming back. Dorman again with the serve, two-handed in the air by Granado. Middle set, howling! And that's why Robin Amos Santos went to her so quickly in the opening set. She has shown some fortitude attacking those sets in the middle. Exactly. I think Robin knows that she needs some offensive uh, output out of that particular middle blocking position. Following the frosh out of Los Angeles, California. Outserve there from Granado. <laughs> Here's Kristen Abels to serve. Leads the team with six aces on the season coming into this match. Sends that one out. Pretty good front row for Hawaii right now with, with Maglio at 6-3, Castillo at 6-3, and Kelsch at 6-1. We're serving five. Middle set. Oblad couldn't put it down. So outside, it's Castillo into the pin. Tried to go line. You know why she tried to go line? Smallest blocker on the team up front, Bailey Choi. Bailey's a good blocker, but they're really going to try to pick on and get the mismatch 6 3 versus 5 9. So here's Adora Anai out of Punaluu. 6 1 senior has put together a decorated career for the Utes at Kahuku High School. Granado almost whiffed on serve receive. And it's slapped over. Chance here for the Utes. Oblad off the block and out. And serve was out. Nobody called it. The right bench was right there. I'm surprised the bench didn't help or some of the players on the opposite side of the court. Anaya second on the team with five aces. She leads in so many categories. She's even tops on the team coming into this match in digs. Almost got the ace there. Free ball coming here for Utah. They somehow pinball it back over. You'll see a middle to Maglio, dug up by Dorman. Back row set to Anai. Oh, that may have been an out ball saved by Yosia. Here's Granado from the back row. Rolls it over. One hand save Anai. Outside, it's Truman. Diving save over the net by Kahakai. We keep going. Anai from behind the line. Block got a piece. Hawaii scrambling. Here's Granado from the back row. And they win another marathon sequence. Oh, Granado is the best at the broken plays. The rally where the other team doesn't expect the ball to come over by, with an attack, but more by, by a bump over and expecting a free ball. Instead, Granado goes up and just wails away. A very alert volleyball. Here's Claire Marie Anderson now to serve. Five serving seven. They once again go to a nine. Truman rising high, couldn't get it down. Back row set to Granado. Bringing the thunder. Hawaii's offense showing some diversity. Last year they had Nikki Taylor hitting out of the back row. This year they've got McKenna Granado and Castillo once in a while hitting out of the back row. And I predict by the end of the year, Emily Maglio will be back there and she'll be hitting out of the back row. Hawaii within one. Oblad denied. Castillo and Maglio. Well, he's starting to pick up with their fifth block of the night. Utah has six. So we start over effectively seven, serving seven. Again, they serve right at a nine. She'll get the bump set from the back row. Two-handed in the air by Anderson. Chris Castillo from off the net got under it. It's a tough play, but Casey's got to keep that ball in. It's not that difficult. Uh, she doesn't do a whole lot with it, but it's got to be kept in play. Give her, her block a chance to score, or get her defense behind her to make a dig. Utah back on top. Middle set. Maglio got blocked. The set was a little low, and that Utah front line took advantage, namely Tawny Luafalemama. 
Robin on those centers. Quick to be up off the bench to tell Yosia set the ball higher to Maglio. She's 6-3. Castillo 6-3 as well. Oblak chases down the second touch. How about the maneuverability of the 6-4 player? Here's Maglio on the slide. He's got a good one here in set two. You want a nail biter? The Jackback said they wanted a nail biter, didn't they? <laughs> they got one. So here is Casey Castillo now to serve. Again, serving right at Adora Anai. The touch by Lua Falimana, saved by Kahakai, but Hawaii unable to return it. So give the kill once again to Lua Falimana. It's her fourth of the match in Utah back up too. The Utes coming in four and one. They opened the season in Lexington, uh, Lexington, Kentucky in the bluegrass battle. Went two and one in that tournament. The only loss, a five set match to then 14th ranked Kentucky. They really should have beaten Kentucky that night. They out hit them 290 to 260. And Beth Lanier said they were very deserving of the win, but not to be that night. There's Bailey Choi with the serve. Overpass by Greeley. Lua Falemana couldn't put it down. Right side set, Maglio pulled the string. With that, Gianna Guinasso enters back into the match and will retreat behind the service line. Now the expectation is at least eight straight points. <laughs> Another yeah. good serve. Middle set. Lua Falemana hits it wide. Well, she got a lot of that one. Great arm swing, just missed the court. But she got a lot of that. So tied to 10, tied for the third time here in this second set. And again, forces the overpass. Baby G does it again. Granado, the beneficiary. Hey, she's just on fire right now. When was the last time we saw this where a server got this hot? Two sets in a row. Guinasso, who walked on to both the indoor and beach volleyball programs here at Hawaii, sends it deep and that one a little too deep. And we're tied at 11, but you gotta love the work she's been putting in. Her dad, Angelo, played on the AVP tour and at Cal Poly, mom, Cindy, played the game at Pomona, so it runs through the veins for sure. Slide, Howling is blocked back, saved by Yosia. High ball bump set to Granado, and she gets smothered by that imposing block of Barton and Lua Falimana. Nowhere to go there. She was in the closet. It was very dark in there, no opening. Hawaii trailing by one, outside Granado. Off the block and out. Granado into double figures. That's her 11th kill on 29 swings. No doubt who the primary target is for Noreen Yosia so far tonight. Good pass there by a nine. Barton. Off Granado and out. Barton's a good freshman, six foot freshman. This freshman class, by the way, one of the prep volleyball magazines says, this is the sleeper class. Uh, I don't think they got ranked in the top 15, but uh, they are very, very good. Yeah, eight newcomers on this Utah roster, seven of them true freshmen. As Granado from the opposite side was able to take just a hair off of it and go off the block and down. So we're tied again here at 13. Last year, Utah going 20 and 12. They went 11 and 9, good enough for fifth place in the Pac 12 conference. That got them an at large bid into the NCAA tournament, but they were bounced in the opening round by UNLV in the initial regional that took place in Provo, Utah. Barton dug up by Yosia. Ahakai bumps at Castillo. Hard angle, but wide. Tried to avoid Oblad. Tried to be maybe too precise there. Good idea to avoid Oblad. Cutting it back down the line might have been a better idea. 
So here's Cameron Machado, 5'9 freshman, part of that aforementioned freshman class. Total But in her first action, she is the backup setter or one of the backup setters for the Utes. And again, they have been sampling running a 6-2, two, two-setter type of offense, but have settled in here in the last few matches on a 5-1. Here's Anai through the block and down. When you look at Adora Anai, she just has that prototypical volleyball body. Part of why she's so effective, part of why Utah gets the 15 first in the second. Welcome back, let's go inside the numbers presented by Heineken, the number is one. That's the number of hitting errors for Hawaii in Friday night's match, a sweep victory over South Dakota on 83 attempts. Hawaii hit 446 for the match that night. Rejoining live action and another stuff. This time, it was Oblad next to Kenzie Kerber, yet another one of these freshmen getting some action here tonight. 6-3 Frost from Chino Hills. So you got 6-3 and 6-4 up there. Up front, that's a big, big block. Utah by three. Here's Kelsch off the block and out. That time also big block, 6-4, and a nine at 6-1. That's a formidable front row for Utah right now. First kill of the match for Kendra Kelsch on eight swings, hitting negative 250 at the moment, and it's an ace. Savannah so what they're trying to do is they're trying to pull a nine up to the net, have her step up, have to pass the ball inside that three-meter line, and an eye thought when the, the middle blocker was going to pass it. You like that game plan? I do. I, I think they should do it again. Same place. They're trying to. Pass handled by Scully. Middle set. That's Kerber dug up by Kahaka. Here's Castillo against the double block, saved by Dorman. Middle set, Oblad, right there's Kahakai again. Kelsch, back set, Granado. From behind the line. Once again, Hawaii finds ways with terrific digs to start transition plays. And they're just kind of just hanging in there against this taller, more experienced Utah team. Three-point burst here by the Bows. Here's a nine from the outside. She gave all you'll see as she could handle down the line. That is kill number four for Adora Anon. This is when Hawaii, when it was their turn to serve, can ill afford to miss any serves because Anai is now in the back row. And she's such a force up front with so many points when she gets to the front row. Longa Nauta into the match for the first time for Utah. Here's Kelsch on the right side. Hard angle and in. That was nicely done there, avoiding the big block next to the pin. Well, good for Yosia to be mixing up the sets. Right now, I'm a little concerned that Granado's got 30 sets already, 31. It's a little early to be having that many sets, that many swings. 17 all, Claire Marie Anderson with the serve. Middle set, Oblad, right down to the floor. Great set for Machado as well. Put it right in Oblad's wheel of this. And it is Oblad to serve. 18 serving 17. Anderson the first touch. Slide goes to Mags. Great dig by Anai. Here's the outside set to Nauta. Dug up in the back row by Granado. Bump set. Castillo gets it down. And a smiling Robin Amo Santos. Clapping from off the bench. Here's the Granado dig to start things. The bump set from Yosia, and then inside that big block goes Castillo. Smart play. So 18 all Castillo to serve. Again, serving a nine. Backside, the touch by Kerber is sniffed out by Kahakai. Here's Granado. Net violation called against Utah, and it's a point for Hawaii, and they take the lead 19 18. Timeout, Beth Lanier. And the Utah Utes, this is exactly where Hawaii took the lead in set one. This presentation of Rainbow Wahine Volleyball is sponsored by Strong and Hawaii Honda Dealers.
Welcome back. The Rainbow Wahine coming from behind again here in set two. They lead 19-18 out of the timeout. Casey Castillo with the serve. Outside set goes to Nauta. Right there is Claire Marie Anderson. The slide to Maglio goes high hands. Dug up by Machado. Here's Kerber. Block out a piece. You'll see it. High and away to Granado. Touched it down the line. Did she get the touch off the block? No. We missed it wide, and it's a point for the youth. Smart move, though. I like that shot by Granado. Trying to get a piece of the outside blocker's hand. And now we're seeing Beth Lanier using two setters in this second set. Bailey Choi was on the bench for some time, rotates in now to serve, replacing Cameron Machado. Lanier did tell us they're still experimenting, still a work in progress as to what their offense is going to be, 6-2 or 5-1. Choi with the serve. It's an ace. Anderson let it by, thinking it was going to stay along, but it laid smack dab on that end line. And Utah in front, 2019. Now we thought this had a chance to be a very competitive match. And we are getting that. Crowd turning up the noise. You'll see it. Outside, Granado sets her feet, goes off the block and out. That was swing number 34 for McKenna Granado, kill number 15. We're tied for the 11th time. Now, if it only goes three sets and she gets 45 swings tonight, not bad. But if it goes to five and she's singing for the six, 65th time, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, get that ice machine ready. <laughs> Here's Gianna Guinasso again to serve. Down the line, handled by Nalta. She'll get the set on the right side, went over the block and in. That was a nice place hit there by the 5'11 junior. Guard from Garden Grove, California. He's only had played in two sets all year long. What a smart play, though. Nalta, who has nine siblings. Yes, nine siblings. So learning how to be competitive, I'm sure, from a very young age. Utah jumping in front, timeout taken by Hawaii. So the importance of this match, C-Mac, because this is a ranked opponent for Hawaii. And truth be told, the Rainbow Wahine have actually lost seven straight versus top 25 opponents going back to 2015. So the importance of this particular matchup, particularly as it pertains to the grand scheme of things this season when it comes to NCAA tournament selection. Well, they've only got two. They had two chances last weekend to play against the top 25 team. They lost both of those to UCLA and San Diego. This weekend, they get one chance playing against uh, playing against Utah. Next weekend, one chance against BYU. The importance of this is that just in case they lose the lead, they lose, let's say, to Cal Poly, they then have to bid for an at-large, and that's going to depend on their RPI. Their RPI is going to go way up if they beat a Pac-12 team and or they beat a WCC team like BYU. So that's the importance of it. BYU ranked 10th in this week's ABCA poll, but you're right. I don't think there is that same air of invincibility when it comes to the Big West Championship. It is not a foregone conclusion by any stretch, and it is not necessarily because the Rainbow Wahine have come all the way back to the field as much as some of the other teams in the conference have started to raise their level of play over the last few seasons. Exactly. It's become a much better conference, and uh, they're looking pretty good. A lot of preseason scores. And listen, there's some good wins by the, uh, the Big West Conference. 21 serving 20. Kahakai receives the serve. Here's Granado. Hits it wide. And that's what you start to wonder about. A lot of reliance on one player right now. Exactly, as those attempts start to rack up. How does that affect her accuracy and her effectiveness? And they're going to have to set her again here. Goes off the block, dug up by Dorman. And Nye will get a chance. Puts it down. And Utah creating some space here. 23 serving 20 in set two. 3-0 Utah run and another timeout taken by Robin Amos Santos. And now that Hawaii really needed to make the most of when Anai was in the back row. Now that she's in the front, it makes it just tougher and tougher to get points. All right, well, while we have a break in the action, let's check out how it works presented by Central Pacific Bank. CMAC, take us through it. I believe this could be uh, area Janik Vanasso with her serve, which has been so good tonight. It's caused so many problems for Utah serve receivers. That one there. 
it. They got to come up from the back row to pass it, overpass it, and Granado puts it down. But all the credit for that point right there should go to Gianna Granasso, who put up the kind of a serve that made it difficult to pass. That's Let's how it works. Thank you for that. Let's check in with Ryan Kalei Suji. Well, here on the Hawaii sideline, head coach Robin Amore really taking time primarily to talk to McKenna Granado about the way in which he's approaching the ball and trying to find more opportunities for her to score points by using the block. Uh, not necessarily saying to go after terminating every single ball, but finding ways to use the high hands, especially in this one rotation. They're hoping to get a better pass and get Howling the ball uh, to take the pressure off Granado. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Any reaction to what Ryan depicted yeah, in the would, huddle? Yeah, I would, I would completely agree. That's great advice for the Robin gave to Granado. I think even more important that uh, what would be nice here is if they had a back row attacker or if they or if uh, you'll see a put down a dump shot, something to relief, give some relief to Granado on the outside, or if Howling could get something on a nice little step out. And it's gonna demand a good pass here to run any kind of an offense and get the ball to somebody else other than Granado. Because they're just loading up on her every time, sending two blockers out on her every single time. Well, what, you're hitting 108 here in set two compared to 214 for the Utes. Here's Granado again out of the timeout. What a save by Bailey Choi. Awkward touch on the set, but Anai is so low roofed by Sophia Howling. That could have very easily been a double hit violation against Utah. It works out as a Hawaii point anyway. Yeah, it's almost like it was athletic justice there a little bit. What do you think about the impact yeah. Sophia Howling has made tonight? How about three blocks? Uh, or, uh, those are her, her season stats right there. And I's going to have to send a free ball Hawaii's way. They can cut it to one. You'll see a middle set to Howling. Boy, amazing. The two freshman blockers that came in from Los Angeles, the Sky Williams and Sophia Howling, Howling really took a back seat the first weekend, didn't she? Sat the whole weekend and watched and cheered on her teammate. This weekend, it's a little bit of reverse, isn't it? Yeah, she's riding shotgun here so far against Utah, but Yosia sends the serve wide. Was that one of the cardinal rule oh, yeah. violations from the service line? Well, I, she was really trying to keep that one in. I see she was cutting it too thin. She wasn't really going for it there, so I can't blame her. She was trying to keep the ball in. A must get here on Aloha Ball for Utah in set two. Howling in the middle, dug up by Dorman, and it'll be a point for Hawaii. They're gonna say that it hit the antenna off of the Dorman dig. The coaching staff for Utah vehemently disagreed. And Wayne Lee, the official on top of the ladder. He's, he's saying that uh, he saw it hit the antenna. He made the call. And so Beth Lanier now discussing her options. I think she is going to go for the challenge card. And so Dixon Chun will take a look at this. So the challenge will be on whether or not that dig by Brianna Dorman wound up off of the antenna. If it did, it's a Hawaii point. If it didn't, then they can replay the point based on the reversal. Exactly. So this is a big one. I really, I really like this challenge system, the fact that we're able to provide the technology to allow the officials to get it right. See if we can tell here. Oh, yeah, they hit the antenna. Hit the antenna, the antenna knocked it back into the field of play, right? There, it's the antenna. It's real obvious. Wayne Lee's right there. He's two, three feet from the play. That's an easy call. Easy call. You get the sense that the coaches, especially the opposing coaches who may be back in their own conferences many times don't have the benefit of the replay challenge, that they really dig it, that they really like oh. having that as a feature in these Stan Sheriff Center matches. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we're going is. to get a Watch verdict. This. And no official signal yet for the world to see, but the call will stand. 
Oh, well, he gets the point. It was, a, it, was the, it was the right call. Good lead by Dixon Chun. Wayne Lee, good call. So two challenges remaining for Beth Lanier. Robin Almo Santos has yet to use one. Still Aloha ball for Utah. Now, Kenna Granado has to get this serve in. And she does. Utah goes outside to a nine. Dug up by Kahakai. You'll see him. Backside to Kelsch. Block out of peace. But the save wasn't made. And can you believe it? We're tied at 24. Is this what we thought? Hawaii had awoken the sleeping giant in game one. And, and Utah was going to come roaring back and win easily in the set two. Here comes Hawaii again coming back. Renato sends it long. And it is a Aloha ball for Utah in the second. Oh, I think I'd put up the challenge on that one. That was pretty close. Was that? You know, we have a decent angle on that. Maybe it's worth the challenge. You got three of them. You can't take them with you. Well, I'm just going to say, Robin Amor Santos has run out of timeouts. Be a way to sort of sure. chill the server. Here's Machado serving for set two. Middle set howling had to touch it over. Scramble play here by Utah. And I'll get a swing from off the net and puts it down. Point Utah. And they take set two. 26-24 despite a valiant effort at the end there by the Rainbow Wahine. Well, we got your nail biter for the first time in this tourney. We're tied at one. Welcome back to help take us through the McDonald's match stats. Let's check in with Chris McLaughlin. Well, a big story here is look at those, those kill percentages. Each team's offense, very paltry to say the least. Utah hitting 342 on the year, hitting 097 tonight. Hawaii uh, hitting a little bit higher than that, but that 149 is also not a very good number. So uh, the defense is the story of the night. Look at those blocks, nine blocks by Utah, seven by Hawaii. The digs also impressive numbers. Each team averaging uh, 17, 18 digs a set. And the service ace bears, again, about even. Hawaii got a couple more aces, but uh, it's really been a story of defense and holding down Adora Nai just a little bit. Hawaii held her to six kills in, uh, in the two sets. She's only hit like a buck 58. So I th that's surprising to me because I thought Adora would would uh, light it up here in front of all of her Kahuku hometown fans. Still I think she still might, still by the way. Time to do that. Still, yeah. still time, yeah. And in this game of psychological chess, it was Utah having to pick up the pieces of imploding in set one, giving up a six-point advantage to see Hawaii win 25-20. But Hawaii then has to deal with the heartache of being so close to winning that second set. It was really up in the air, tied at 24. Do you know there's a big, up losing 26-24. You know there's a big difference between going to the locker room 2-0 and 1-1? It's like huge. You don't say. Huge. And Hawaii came so close to getting that. So it is Hawaii that will have to reignite the fire. And you'll see a serving to start set three. Middle set goes to Tawny Luafalemana, and she misses wide. So she is actually hitting in negative numbers, which is completely foreign uh, for this player who ranked seventh in the Pac-12 conference last year with a 329 hitting percentage. And she's led the way this year with a 462 average. Outside set, it's a nigh roll shot. Well timed, well placed. Adora Anai with her seventh kill of the match. Smart shot there by Adora. She's got all the shots. She's got that. I love her heater down the line. Uh, it's my favorite. But I think she's also got that with the deep court area five is also on her second favorite shot, I believe. Here's Granado. Got it in there. Looked like she got a piece on that block as well. Either way you slice it, it's a point for Hawaii. So a lot of the talk, you heard the corner crew during the intermission. You were talking about it in set two. Keeping a close eye on the attack total for McKenna Granado. Basically the workload. Exactly. 38 swings right there. Here's Barton. Hard angle and in. Now Granado has accumulated huge 
kill attempt numbers before. Her career high came last year. Opening weekend, second night against Kansas State, she swung 66 times. And she actually got up to 64, if you remember, last week against UCLA. That's right. So she can, she can carry the load. But the effectiveness in carrying that much of a load, that becomes the question. Bump set, Anai. Put a little extra sauce on at that time. Adora Anai now with eight kills. Here's a dig by Dorman in the back row, just lays it out, pops it up, keeps it on her own side of the net. Nice play, nice bump set there by Dorman to Anai. Free ball coming here for Utah. They go step out. Roblad is blocked back. Here's an eye. Down the line and in. He said down the line heater. I was showing you about. She just loves to hit that shot. So that's nine kills for her. One more, and she will extend a streak. She has registered 10 or more kills in now 31 straight matches going back to last year. Service error, though. Cameron Machado, or excuse me, make that Kristen Abels, gives Hawaii the point. And, and I also a member of the 25 kill, 25 dig club. It hasn't been done too many times in Utah history. So three serving four here. Early portion of set three. Outside, it's Anai again, dug up by Kahakai. Here's Castillo. Hard angle and in. And that is good to see as Hawaii tries to find another source of offensive production outside of McKenna Granado. Exactly. Castillo struggled tonight. Three kills, four errors. Now she's back up to flatlining it, as you say. Four serving four. Here's an eye. Dug up by Kahakai. Above the net, an eye blocked back by Maglio. Put over on the second touch, snipped out by Kahakai. Here's Maddox. Right there is Brianna Dorman. From off the net, Anai, diving save, Kahakai, that was pretty. But nobody had the second touch for her. And that's another kill for Adora Anai, give her double digits for the match. Well, she's now got, she's now reached that double yeah. digit record, Make right? it 32 straight wow. matches. And as you were discussing, still a lot of time in this match for Adora Anai to go off. Middle set, Maglio rattles it through the block and down. There's someone, if Hawaii starts passing the ball better, there's someone who could take a lot of load off McKenna Granado, this is Emily Maglio. So clear Marie Anderson to serve, tied at five. Whooping in is Nauta, and she goes off the Yosia block and out. So 6-5, here's Oblad with the serve. Yosia goes outside to Castillo from off the net. Nice dig there by Abels. Nauta blocked back. Oh, a little mix-up on that second touch. And it was Anai and Abels basically colliding. And that forced the error. So six all. As we eke forward here in set three. Slide goes to Lua Falemano. From her knees, the save by Castillo. Granado! Oh, she got blanketed by Lua Falemana. Great set by Yosia. Granado, great swing, but an even better block by Lua Falemana. Straight down, and there's the celebration. A little bit of frustration by Lua Falemana, I think, tonight. Normally she hits for such a much better hitting percentage. Mix, mix up for it a little bit by getting big blocks like that. Utah up one, step out goes to Maglio, blocked. Saved by Yosia, bump set goes to Granado. Her touch shot doesn't clear the net. Hawaii in a two-point hole here in the third. <laughs> Bailey Choi back to serve. Sends it out. 
Choi, who was the Hawaii State Player of the Year as a senior at Iolani, both by the award given on behalf of Gatorade as well as the Honolulu Star Advertiser and became the first player since 2002 to win State Player of the Year honors after not earning first team All-State honors the previous year. It's called improving, isn't it? I guess so. <laughs> player development, right? Right side, Nauta. She's made a strong impact since entering the match in set two. Well, for someone who's only played two sets all year long, she's really come on like gangbusters. A whip of an arm. Spent two seasons at Northwest College in Wyoming, a two-time JUCO All-American, showing some of the reasons why. And Shannon Scully, out of the vaunted modern-day high school volleyball program, sends it over. Outside, here's Granado blocked and roofed. They are giving McKenna Granado, understandably, a ton of attention. And that time, Barton and Lua Falemana turned it back. See, if Lake gets a good pass and sets the slide to Howling, she'll only have one blocker on it. And here is Howling. Two blockers were up on the slide. Now Granado over the double block right there is Dorman. Here's Barton. Off the block and out, and Utah has opened up a four-point advantage. It is 11, serving seven. Timeout taken by Robin Amos Santos. All smiles on the Utah side of the net. Beyond Spectrum Sports. Jelani Tavai, linebacker for the University of Hawaii football team. The 2-0 UH football team in the house. Out of the timeout, though, a couple of his fellow Polynesians joining forces on the roof. Nua Falimana, as well as Adora Anai, and Utah up five. Yeah, Jelani Tavai leading the team with 10 tackles, had a fumble recovery last night against Western Carolina. Granado tried to tool the block, unable to do so. So the set goes to Anai, diving save by Kahakai, and Utah rolling right now. Well, they're playing some good ball ball. They got an eye in the front row. And uh, Hawaii just struggling to get a, a, a side out in this two hitter rotation. Five Holy. Excuse me, 5 0 run for the youth team. Yeah, Howling and uh, Granado just struggling to get a, get a kill here. Granado tried to shove it by the block. Nothing doing. Barton and Lua Falemana again saying, uh uh. So if you remember back to last year, this is where Annie Mitchum or, or especially Nikki Tanner would hit the ball out of the back row and provide another offensive option. Right now, with just two options, uh, the Utah block is not having any trouble figuring out where the ball is going to be set. Utah sniffing out Hawaii offensively right now, and Robin Amos Santos grasping at straws, puts McKenna Ross in. You'll see a Back row to Ross, just what, what you were talking about, C-Mac, unable to put it down. Here's Barton, dug up by Ross, beautifully done. Granado double block up. She is roof again. That is team block number 14 for the Utah Utes. And this is an area that Beth Lanier said, oh, if we've got something we need to work on, we need to work on our block. It's not very good this, this year so far. Well, I think that concern has got to be over. Yeah, I think the block has arrived. And Hawaii victimized by it time and time again, especially here in this third set as Anai goes off the block and out. Kill number 12 for her. And almost Santos watching almost helplessly here. The crowd will try to help her out. You'll see it called Ross's number, called her own number that last time. And here's Granado again. And coming into the twine. Was one of the front row players for the Utes. And so Hawaii finally able to advance the rotation. Noreen Yosio will serve. It was a long time stuck in that rotation. Eight serving 16. And Yosio sends it long. That is the eighth service error for Hawaii. One of the things you don't want to do is after you've worked with that long to finally get a side out, you've got to get the next ball in play to give your defense a chance to score. Here's Dorman to serve. Kahakai sets outside to Kelsch, blocked back, popped up, joust at the net. Hawaii still with it on their side. Kelsch 
Tried to dink it again over that block, but Barton, how active has she been on that pin? Able to send it back to Hawaii's side and down. Both of her parents, athletes at Utah, has two brothers, Cody and Jackson, who play for the Utah football team. And right now, it is all good for the Utes. Up 10 on the Rainbow Wahine. Well, Barton's senior year, she hit, she hit six, 10 in high school her senior year when Utah Gatorade Player of the Year. Impressive athlete. Another roof for Utah. This time, Berkeley Oblad getting the gist of it. Timeout taken by Hawaii as Utah dominating at the net. Well, the block party continues on the Utah side of the net. They have 15 total team blocks to this point. Six of those coming in this set three. Pretty amazing. Danny Barton's got nine blocks. Berkeley Oblad has five. And Atani Louis, Lua Falimana, 10. So Hawaii just trying to reach double figures here in the third. Granado sends it long. No touch up front. Point for Utah, and the onslaught continues. The crowd wants a touch. So to their urging, Robin Amos Santos grabs the challenge guard. I don't know if she's going to challenge well, the a, touch or where the ball landed. I don't think she cares. She's down 20 to 8. She's out of timeouts. And she's got three challenge cards left. Wouldn't you use something to slow the other team down? Might as well. A little bit of uh, strategy involved here. I'm not sure you're allowed to talk to the team, though, but she is. So she, again, had to be very specific in what she was challenging. I believe she's challenging where the ball landed. Was it in or out? And it's hard to tell from that angle with the top of the tape impeding the view. Hmm. Hard to tell. Yeah. It's too bad she can't say. Well, can you look for the touch? And? Yeah. That's a good point. Line. That's part of the guidelines here for the replay challenge is that you have to specify exactly what you are challenging on that sequence. You can't do multiple challenges on one play. You have to decide, are you challenging whether or not it was touched or whether or not it landed in? Exactly. The call will stand. But Robin getting what amounts to a free timeout out of it. Even got to talk with her players. And she's even unleashing a few perhaps sarcastic smiles over at the bench, knowing that this set two has gotten away from her squad. Here's Granado. Nice little cross play. But she hits it long. And she's going to challenge the call again, Robin Amos Santos. Now I think she might be challenging the touch. Challenge touch off the top there. It was a nice looking play in transition there. So again, it's like getting a third and fourth <laughs> timeout for Robin Amos Santos. There it is right here. We'll see if there's a touch. Ooh, hard to tell there. <laughs> you see any fingers bend back, Canoa? I didn't. Let's see if we can tell on this angle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's probably the best angle, too. And now, this being the second challenge put forth by Robin Amol Santos, only one left. And it occurs at a stage in set two that you can conclude is all but inconsequential. I think this is more a matter of talking to her team and calming them down. And this time out, this is a, she's having really good conversations with them about this set and maybe pulling them out of the dumps a little bit, being down 20 to eight. He's, she's giving them some positivity and hope that, uh, you know what, don't push any panic buttons here. There's still a fourth set to go. 
Utah turning this match on its side here in set three. Six team blocks. They're hitting 435. The call will stand. It's a point for Utah. So now two challenges by Robin Amol Santos used. Both of them failed, by the way. And Hawaii on the other side. No team blocks in his third set, hitting negative 179. A 13 to 1 run by the Utes. Hawaii just trying to close strong. Maybe build a little momentum for that third set. That'll help. A stop by McKenna Granado on a door on nine. How important were those last couple of points of set two? Huge, huge. Well, I could have gone to the locker room up if they had gotten that second set up 2 0. And this would be inconsequential this particular set. Yeah, you wouldn't be all that worried if you're Hawaii. And that'll be a Rainbow Wahine point. Four hits on the Utah side of the net. So 10 serving 21. Lieutenant Granado. 17 kills on 50 swings. Middle set. And Oblad goes off the block and down. Oblad at 6 4. Easy to set her. Just set it up there high. Anywhere around the net. She's pretty good at putting it down. Oblad on the year hitting 408. Here's Castillo winding up, uncoiling. Unable to get it down. Bump set goes to Anai from off the net. Roll shot is sniffed out by Castillo. Here's Kelsch through the block and down. And maybe that's all you can hope for if you're Robin Amos Santos is just a little bit of energy to end this third set to perhaps portend good things in set four. Exactly. And I think that's what she was telling the team during those challenge timeouts. Okay, with the serve. Choi goes outside to a nine and basically just slam dunks it down. Adora Nye, quite the athlete. I mean, not only does she have the prototypical physique for volleyball, but in high school at Kahuku, she played guard in basketball. She was a goalkeeper in soccer. She ran long distance, competed in the long and triple jumps. She did it all, basically. <laughs> Able to get that serve in, though. I think there's still more upside for her as well. You know, Dave Schultz was telling me he did recruit her, but uh, at that point in time, she was only jumping 9 8 and uh, had some, you know, skill sets that were a little bit behind, and he only had one scholarship left, so it was a little bit tricky that, at that time for him to give her a scholarship. That's a roof. Castillo and Manglio. Hawaii doing some positive things here at this tail end of set three. Slide. Oh, what a save by Granado. Here's Castillo. Curls it in. How about a smile from the head coach in response? Look at the save by Granada right here. Left-handed, one-handed, down on the floor, and then Castillo with a little rainbow shot to the corner. And that one's sent long by Nalta. Hawaii gets to 15. And Nalta's a lot like Granada when she gets a heavy arm. And so a timeout taken by Utah. I mean, I mean, come on, right? I mean, <laughs> come on. The Utes still up eight. But I think what we're talking about with regard to the Rainbow Wahine and their objective here at this tail end of set three, try to make it interesting, obviously. Try to create a little bit of excitement and momentum going forward. And Beth Lanier not wanting to see that, obviously, from I the Utah side. I guarantee what she's saying in the huddle is, let's finish this, not give them any momentum going into the four. That's what her whole timeout, will, I'm sure, will be about. Time now for the Fujitsu air conditioning cool play of the match. c -Mac. I believe it's going to be McKenna Granado's one-arm dig right here. Lays down on the floor, pops it up. 
keeps it alive. Kahakai keeps it alive. And Castillo with a rainbow shot to the corner. Making Robin Santos very happy. There's the looper. And he drops in. That's a pretty cool play, I would say. Good choice by our truck crew. Let's check in with Ryan. What's up? Hey, thanks, Gunnar. Well, during this past time out, the coaching staff for Utah primarily spending the majority of their time talking to Bailey Joy about her setting selection. The rest of the team were assembled on the end of the bench, but the coaching staff spending a lot of time talking to her about her shots, uh, her setting sh selection, I should say, and trying to find the right play at the right time. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. You know, you pointed out something in the pregame, C-Mac, that Bailey Choi lists her sports hero as Robin Amo Santos, and here she is now taking on the team that is coached by Robin. Of course, she played for Robin, as several of the Utah uh, players did. In club volleyball. Out of the timeout, outside, goes to Nalta. And she had to stutter step on that approach, and she still made it work. You're right, she has a very live arm, and she gets Utah to a little ball here in the third. And a misconnection there between Choi and Nalta. Outside, Castillo, dug up by Anai. Outside is Nalta again, and she closes the deal. So after a couple of competitive sets, Utah runs away and hides in set three. 25-15, the final there, and the Rainbow Wahine trailing two sets to one as they swap sides at the SSC. Welcome back, so Hawaii up against the ropes here against the 22nd ranked Utah Utes. The Rainbow Wahine coming from behind in set one. They trailed by as many as six. Went on a big time run, nine straight points to help win that one, 25-20. Came down to the wire in set two. Utes came out of there with the win there, 26-24 going into the intermission. And then Utah put on a show in set three at the net via their blocking game. Six team blocks in that third set alone. They have 15 for the match. Hawaii with just two blocks in that third set. They have nine total team blocks. Utah also hitting 344 in set three compared to negative 059 for Hawaii. So a dominating performance. And the Rainbow Wahine are going to have to try to figure something out here to stay alive in this match. I mean, listen to Huddle. The Huddle was pretty loose. Robin Amo Santos was not scolding her team for playing poorly. It was more like she realized that Utah played really well, hitting 3 340 and getting all those blocks, and it was just very difficult to uh, mount an attack against Utah. So it was almost like credit the other team. They played well. Now go out at 0 0 and get, get your game together and play like you did in the first two sets. So I, I enjoyed watching that hunt. Attendance numbers through the turnstile 5,326. There does seem to be a different tone, different vibe as you see Sky Williams getting the start here in set four. You know, Robin, who through training camp, almost militaristic in the way she was applying discipline, certainly in terms of the conditioning. But as we have entered through week number two in the season, as Shannon Scully starts set four off with an ace, we're seeing a bit of a lighter tone from Robin Amo Santos, more picking and choosing which times to get into her team and, and which times to be a little more uplifting. I would agree. It's part of the evolution and, and uh, the growing of her as a head coach. And here's second straight ace. Here's a nigh through the block and down. Williams unable to deny access there. So a nigh continues to climb. <laughs> With regard to her numbers. Again, this, this is why he's tough rotation with Yosia playing front right and only two hitters with her in the front row. And free ball coming. Hawaii's transition game absent here so far in set four. And then Tawny Luafale Mana ripping into it. It is 3 nothing Utah just like that. You can only hold down Tawny for so long. And then she's going to come firing back. She's too good a player. There's Williams. One-handed in the air by Barton. Sent across. They go D-set to Kelsch. Dug up by Scully. Here's a nine. Blocked and rolled. There's Sky Williams. 
the reigning Big West Conference Freshman of the Week. Now the light gets into a much stronger rotation now with their arguably their top server. And you'll see a back right, and then a pretty good front row with Granado, Kelsch, and Williams. Good pass by Dorman, though, on the you'll see a serve, and then a nice, so smooth, so in control when she approaches that set. She's efficient, almost like it makes it look effortless when she attacks the ball. A lot of upside for her, too. I think she's got, she could play at the next level. Steele having some serve receive issues here in the fourth. Free chance for Utah. Oblad pounds it home. And there is a rhythm to this Utah transition game right now that just is not being matched on the Hawaii side of the net. Yeah, they're, they're, they're firing on all cylinders right now, you might say. The pass there by Kahakaya. There's Kelsch blocked and roofed. I mean, it's like Groundhog Day. Barton right next to Oblad. And Robin Amos Santos forced to signal a timeout. Welcome back. Adora Anai now 15 kills, hitting 270. But Utah has kicked it into a different gear here over the last set plus. Meanwhile, the Wahine hitting the skids, and you wonder if some of that is fatigue factor. Not sure, but Utah has certainly figured some things out, including where to attack here on these serves. Castillo having some problems in serve receive. She has been pretty short-handed for the most part here in 2017, but this fourth set choppy for the Wahine. Good dig there by Yosia. Granado off the block, diving save Dorman. But to no avail. Hawaii, a much needed point there. What I think we've really seen is the imposition of Utah's size. It seems like there's no rotation where they are, they're outsized by Hawaii, just, and they're just so physical up front. And we're really, I'm really su personally surprised by the number of blocks. You know, 16 blocks on the night. Bethlehem would have never expected that in the, the pregame talk we had with her. Yeah, pleasant surprise for her, for sure. Choi goes outside. Here's Anai again. Annihilating all of the sets coming her way. Isn't that her nickname? That's right. Her by Bailey Choi or the SID. I'm not sure whom, but uh, the annihilator. There's actually an annihilator in their in their uh, press release. There's an annihilator countdown of when she's going to become the all-time kill leader in Utah. There's Kelsch. Slide. Oblad. Couldn't quite get into it. So chance for Hawaii Williams in the middle. Paintbrush strike there. Here's a nigh touch shot. Right there is Castillo. Good defense. Back row set to Granado. Knuckled over by Choi. Hawaii with it again. Middle set. Williams. Oh, good effort on both sides of the net. Hawaii wins a long one. Sky Williams bringing some energy into this fourth set. Here comes Maglio. Good front row here. Maglio, Castillo, both of them at 6'3", and Kelsch at 6'1". Heads up! Oh, okay. Got to get these serves in. Outside, it's a nigh. Block. And a roof. Solo stuff by Kendra Kelsch. How about that? That was unexpected, but Kendra does a nice job up there. She's always been a good right side blocker for Hawaii. All four years, she's been pretty good over there. And a good celebrator, too. <laughs> Four serving, seven. Service error. That's number nine in the match for Hawaii, compared to five for the Utes. Hawaii's got Danny Choi up there, you know, as a, as a uh, small blocker at 5-9. You'll see if uh, you'll see a picks on her wherever she goes. And I to serve. Lucia outside to Castillo. Challenging Oblad next to Choi. Here's Nalta over the double block and a net violation against Hawaii. And Utah up five. The Utes preseason pick to finish fourth in the Pac-12. That's their highest preseason ranking since joining the league back in 2012. Washington, if you're wondering, is the favorite in the conference.
Oh, great serve by Anai. Good effort by Hawaii just to return it. Here's Choi outside. Nauta blocked and roof. Kelsch got a piece of that one, too, right next to Maglio. So Hawaii, I guess, feels like they're now, they've now got an invitation to the block party. So five serving nine. Can Hawaii pull off a comeback again here to try to extend this match? Nauta through the block and down. She gets up off the floor. She really does. Her arm swing is so much like Granado. It's like, they're like mirror images of each other. Overpass tight to the net. You'll see it plays it off of the joust. Here's Castillo over the double block. And that's going to work out as a point for the Rainbow Wahine. That's kill number six for Casey Castillo. Good look there at Beth Lanier. 28th season as head coach for this Utah program. Outside, here's Nalta blocked back. Scramble play by Utah, but it turns into a roof. This is usually the venue where Hawaii throws the block party, as you talked about. Utah's been stealing of the show a little bit. Yeah. Rainbow Wahine trying to right the ship. You see the blocking numbers. Already four blocks in this fourth set for Hawaii. But Castillo sends it into the net. The ill-timed service error strikes again here for Hawaii. Right now, nine or ten, ten service errors. Of course, they've served tougher. You're going to make you're going to make some errors when you start serving tougher. So that, that's going to happen. But it seems like a lot of them have come at the wrong time and place. Oh, okay, good pass. Slide goes to Maglio. High hands dug up by Choi. So Dorman, back bump set to a nine dug up by Kahaka. Here's Granado, touch shot, pancake save Nauta. No, they will say that it touched the floor, and it's a point for Hawaii. Quickly up off the bench is Beth Lanier. And we're gonna have another challenge, I think. Nauta very confident that she got the spatula underneath that one. And so Lanier is going to challenge that call right there. Dixon Chung was quick to put his hand toward the floor. He's the second referee. He was right next to that ball. And look, I'd be surprised if, if he overrules himself here. Huh. Ooh. Huh. That looked, that looked pretty good. Take a look at it again here. Oh, no, a lot of ball on the floor there. Yeah. Tough, well, that's a tough call. So what, what are you ruling here, C-Mac? You're the referee. Well, you got the uh, each, very okay. fashionable blue shirt on I right saw, now. I saw it one way on one view and one way on the other. Therefore, it's not overwhelming evidence to overturn my call as the umpire. So the call. The second referee. So the call stands. I would say it stands. Which was a Hawaii point. Yeah, I could see him. See, seen some evidence there, though, that it was good. He's taking a long, see, a lot of ball on the floor there. All right, head sets off. Floor. Ball was down, yeah. And the call was stand. It did look, throughout those replays, like it was the right call. There was a lot of correct ball on the terraflex. An important point there, Hawaii within three. So showing some signs of life here in this fourth set. And Gianna Guanasso to serve. Choi goes middle, and Lua Falemana. Can only hold her down for so long. Right? She was hitting negative for a long time. She's finally up to positive numbers. That's her sixth kill, now hitting 0 71. But she just clobbers the ball when it comes her way. 12 serving eight. Here's Scully. You'll see outside the Granado. Blocked and Ruth. Guess who? Tawny Lua Fadimano. I mean, 
And we haven't seen a team put on this kind of blocking show against Hawaii in some time. Ooh, that one even got turned back on the dump shot attempt by Yosia. An eye to save. Bodies flying. It's Barton from the opposite position. Middle set. Williams blocked and roofed. They do it again. 18 team blocks for the Utes. And one of the things that they're doing well, I'll tell you, is that they're the beneficiaries of having you'll see in the front with two hitters, and they will get two blockers up almost every time on Hawaii's leading attack for McKenna Granato. They'll just say, you know what? We'll, we'll have the other blocker just be on our own to cover the other two hit the other hitter. It was the largest lead of this fourth set for Utah momentarily prior to the service error. You'll see it now behind the line for Hawaii. And a foot foul. And Hawaii finding ways to make things a little bit more difficult for themselves. Down six. The exact same deficit as the first set. It's been done. It's been done tonight. But Utah riding a wave right now of confidence. Here's Granado. Goes off the block and out. But it kept the block in a whole lot of that offering. Granado's got a blocking brigade following her wherever yeah. she goes. Yeah. Taking her time to serve here. Attacks Anai. Places a perfect pass. Gets the set on the outside. Somehow it's pinballed around in return. Kelch outside. Castillo off the block. Anai saves it. Williams can't put it down the first time. The second time, though, goes. There was a bizarre play. I thought Hawaii had to block the first time on Anai. And they just had great coverage. There's the two tap downs by Sky Williams. And the big smile afterwards. But Give, give Utah credit for yeah. first coverage on a nice attack. Utah's playing good volleyball. Defensively, transition is smooth. A lot of that relying on that arm right there. Anai, however, she sends it wide. Hawaii back to within three. There's a chink in the armor of Superwoman. From that esteemed Anai family, Uncle Robert, an offensive coordinator at Virginia in the game of football. Here's Barton. That was a questionable set by oh, Bailey Choi. And a questionable tip shot by Barton. But it works out as a Utah opponent. It would have been huge for this 13 15 round and 12 16. Now Cameron Machado in to serve. Williams sends it long. Utah back up five. She had a pretty good swing out there. She had room. There was court there for her. Hawaii running out of points. Running out of time here. To try to stay afloat against the Utes. Good pass by Kahakai. From her knees, you'll see a sets up Castillo dug up by Scully. Here's a nine. Does it again. 17 kills for Adora Anai. What an athlete. She'll She'll get blocked one time and come back as if it never happened. Great demeanor. Here's Kelsch, they need a point. Oblad the dig. Here's an eye again. Roll shot blocked back. Oblad plays it off the net. Free ball here for Hawaii. You'll see a picks and chooses outside. Castillo gets it down. You know, we talked about the club volleyball experience for several players on both sides of the net, but Robin Amos Santos coaching Bailey Choi, Adora Anai at the club level, several of the Hawaii players, McKenna Granado, Claire Marie Anderson, Savannah Kahakai, Faith Ma'afala. And that was the 18s team, and you start reflecting on the names that were on their squad, and that was one heck of a volleyball club team as Anai able to take care of that dig that wound up above the net. And so the question, he was pretty loaded. Loaded, absolutely. Won a big tournament in Vegas that particular year. But the question then becomes, what was Adora Anai one of the targets 
by the University of Hawaii program. Most certainly she was, but as is the case with many local players, had an urge to play elsewhere, to travel, to be away from home for the college experience. And certainly Beth Lanier telling us before the match, she is happy that Adora and I made that decision. Utah by seven, timeout Hawaii. Welcome back. Stick around for the Heineken post game show coming up right after the match as our corner crew breaks down all of tonight's highlights and statistics. It has been a roller coaster ride Who's for a Hawaii. Kid, kid? Yeah, who is that? That's Mihana McLaughlin. <laughs> how about that? I don't know where they found her. <laughs> it was Emily Maglio blocked back. That is granddaughter. Mihano yes. McLaughlin, right? I think so, yes. That's, that's terrific. Here's Kelsch. Dug up by Machado. Herbert. Good save there by Kahakai. Here's Castillo. The touch shot falls. And Hawaii gets a much needed point. You made an interesting point during the commercial break. We were talking about Adora and I. And her right, decision to, to yeah to go to Utah. Well, play with the main yeah, there's rumors that she went because of the school colors, <laughs> same as Kahuku. And another rumor that was she went there because of the uh, the logo. Aren't they similar, Kahuku and Utah logos? Kahuku does have a logo similar to what Utah was donning on their warm-up uniforms here tonight. As Maglio gets it down on the step out. It's the circle with the letter U, and they have the feather coming off of it. Uh, Kahuku has a version of its logo that is almost identical, except, yeah. you know, with a K. <laughs> Beth Lanier saying it, it does tend to go over well with the uh, players we try to recruit from Kahuku as Oblad puts the smack down on that one. Once again, Utah's again flexing their muscles at the net. Oblad with eight kills, 17 swings, hitting 235. So overall for the match, certainly some lower percentage numbers than what the Utes have been used to here this season. But they have more than made up for it in the blocking department. Garcia goes cross court to Castillo, blocked, sent over. Utes now on the attack. They go back row to Anai, blocked and roof. Shut the door. One All-American going eyeball to eyeball. I guess another All-American. Now a substitution here by Robin Amos Santos, putting in McKenna Ross to serve in place of Casey Castillo. High toss. Good serve. Great pass by Anai. And then Nauta comes swooping in. Dunk up off the block by Ross. Here's Granado. The touch shot. And it's not over yet. Hawaii within four. Utah signaling for a timeout. They've already seen Hawaii come back twice tonight. They don't want to see a third. So Beth Lanier, very cautious, wanting to call that timeout quickly. Granado with 21 kills on 58 attempts, hitting 0.69. Hawaii hitting 102 for the match, 139 here in this must-win fourth set. Take another look at that last play. Again, two blockers well formed on McKenna Granado. They know where she is at all times. That time she pulled the string and managed to find the open spot in the floor. But uh, it is. Uh, such a such a battle against this team uh, for Utah that there is so big across the front where they go. Now they're in their 6-2, so they, they take the smallest blocker out from Bailey Choi and they put in you know, bigger blockers, making it very, very difficult for Hawaii. So coming up next for the Utes, they will host the Utah Volleyball Classic in Salt Lake City, San Diego, Green Bay, Missouri in that tournament. Another non-conference affair with BYU. Nice rivalry that they've always had going back many years. Uh, and then they also play at Utah Valley before jumping into Pac-12 play September 22nd. They'll open things up with Colorado. But what we have seen out of this Utah squad 
how much of a contender can they be in that vaunted Pac-12 conference, in your opinion? Well, that's a good question. The defending national champion with, like, six starters back in Stanford, you know, they've got to be the favorite, although Washington was picked, I guess. But you look at those two teams, uh, and then you look at a very good UCLA team, and I can see why Utah would be picked fourth, and they could upset those other three on any given night. Ross tickles the tape. Dorman, that one tight to the net. And it'll be a Hawaii point. Back row attack called against Machado, who was trying to get up there on the set. And Hawaii within three. Enough to get Beth Lanier to bite a couple of nails. She's got one more timeout if she wants to slow Hawaii down. Hawaii with none. Ross gets it in again. Outside, Nauta. Roll shot, diving save, Anderson, Maglio couldn't get it down. A knife from the back row, dug up by Kahakai. You'll see him. Back row set to Ross. Dug up by Adora Anai. Here's Nauta again. Big swing. And a net violation called against Hawaii. Wow, Lona Nauta bringing the heat. The two-time Juco All-American who ranked second in the nation in kills last year will celebrate her 20th birthday later this month. So she has risen to the challenge here at the SSC tonight. Oh boy, with no scouting report on her. Only two sets coming in tonight. So not much to read on her. You'll see it slide to Maguire off the block. Choi goes backside, Barton somehow got it over inside the pin. Here's Granado, the touch shot. Troy was expecting at that time. And I slaps it across. Chance for Hawaii. Maglio off the block. Troy, back row set to a nine. Got a piece. Good play off the net by Granado. And we play on. Troy, middle set. Luo Falemano's blocked back. Joust at the net. Utes keep it alive. Maglio denying access on the dump shot. Here's Barton. Right there is Yosia. So Kahakai bumps at Granado. Off the block and down. Wow. You saw Angelica Inquist get off the bench and high five Robin Amo Santos. That high five was all about, hey, wasn't it great to watch that team play with so much drive, so spirit, perseverance, patience in that long round? At the end of the day, that is all you can truly ask if you are a head coach. With a great serve by Baby G. Here's Barton, roll shot, dug up by Granado. Granado sets the feet, touch shot, deep corner. What a save by Anai. That was incredible. Hawaii with the advantage, though. You'll see it to Granado. Net violation, Utah. Hawaii within two. You may see another timeout by Beth Lanier. She's got one left. It looks like she's not going to use it. Again, it looks like uh, Adora Nye still in the back row. The fighting spirit of this Rainbow Wahine squad on full display throughout this match. Lua Falemano misses wide. Timeout by the Utah Utes. Hawaii right back in the mix here in set four. Let's check the athleticism of Adora Anai with this diving save here. She reaches out, extends her full body out there. All six foot one of her. Just keep that ball alive, keep that rally going. What a rally that was. Hawaii on a six. One run. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, every time it seems as though Hawaii is on the verge of unraveling and certainly save that set three, they have put together a tenacious rally. And you have to appreciate and respect the effort that they have been putting forth. Still trailing by one, though, here in the fourth. Let's check in with Ryan Kalei-Suji. Well, interesting dynamic on the Hawaii sideline. Savannah Kahakai, the senior, taking time to talk to Skylar Williams, the freshman, about her blocking, uh, talking to her about their hand placement, what she wants Skylar Williams to take away. And Savannah Kahakai planning to play defense around that great interaction here on the Hawaii sideline. 
a lot, Ryan. Credit to McKenna Ross, you see in the backdrop on the bench there. Put together a strong service run with the jump serve when they needed it most. And this one is not how yet. Savannah Kahakai with 20 digs. She wants about three or four more. How about Adora Anai on the other side? 18 kills. She's got a double-double performance with 16 digs. And she's had to pass the ball 31 times, almost half of Utah's serve receives. Guanasso to serve out of the timeout. It goes to a nine. Choi goes middle, Barton. Anderson couldn't scoop it up. Interesting play that right there by Utah. Very interesting. Normally they run for, uh, Lua Falimana in the middle and Barton on the right. That time they switched them. What a great call out of the timeout. So here's Shannon Scully to serve for the Utes. Two-handed by Granado. Second touch dump shot by Yosia dug up. Then Barton goes off the block and down. Oh, Utah's I, defense incredible. I like to why he's played there too. I like the dump shot by Yosia. I thought it was wide open, but Utah popped it up and got a play out of it. Barton got a great swing. She's having a terrific night. And it is Aloha ball for Utah for the match. Outside, here's Granado, touch shot, net violation called against the Utes. So it remains Aloha ball. Hawaii will serve, though, and it is Noreen Yosia behind the service line. No room for error. If anyone can start the rally, it's Noreen Yosia with that amazing serve of hers. Here it comes. Good pass. Lua Falimana. One hand saved by Yosia. That was incredible. Bernardo dug up by Dorman. Here's Anai. Blocked the roof by Sky Williams. And Kendra Kelsch might have been in on that as well, but how about this? A one pointer in the fourth set. Wow. It remains Aloha Ball for the match for Utah. The third Aloha ball. Here's Yosia. Pass by Dorman. Outside. Anai ends it. How fitting. The Kahuku alum, the senior, one of the all time greats in Utah volleyball program history, finishes the deal on Hawaii's home floor. The members of the Anai family holding up the sign. What a match. Well played by both sides. Especially the defense night, the number of digs and the blocks really were the story of the night. You see a lot of kisses, handshakes exchanged between the former Timi Ike teammates in mm -hmm. club volleyball. Not for a lack of tenacity on the Hawaii side of the net, but they fall three sets to one to nationally ranked Utah. Scott Robbs has Robin Amos Santos. Scott. All right, guys, thanks a lot with Coach Robin Almos Santos. And Coach, you have to be happy with the effort. You came up short, but after that third set, your team could have easily just folded, and they didn't. I think that's the theme of this year. Um, I always ex I express my, hey, you guys got to come out. You guys get it heart, passion, you know, intensity, and that's the top of our list, and that's what they come out and do every night. So I'm okay. Were you surprised a bit by how well Utah was able to block tonight? You know, I told them in the locker room, I said, hey, th that team is physical. If you want to make it in the tournament, you want to make it farther than the tournament, we're going to have to play guys that are just big, you know? So dig deep, keep swinging, aim for hands, and let's go. Was it kind of fun, though, to be able to coach against some of the players that you coached in club volleyball? Oh, yeah, it's always awesome. I told them, I said, hey, I got some girls on the other side that we coach. You know, it's probably going to be a good game. But this is the games you guys get, you know, we get up for it. We look forward to it. Well, you get a, a short turnaround on Thursday. Another nationally ranked team, BYU. I know. Who scheduled that? <laughs> Look at that. They're like, why are we playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday? But you know what? We're always looking out for good games, and we're just going back inside the gym, work on some few things. Hopefully, come out better next week. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Guys, back over to you. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match, Adora Anai, in her homecoming. Put on a great show in this tournament and showed her skills once again tonight against Hawaii. 19 kills, hit 189, three blocks, 16 digs. Savannah Kahakai hitting the 20-dig mark once again.
four assists and an ace as well for Savannah. All right, so we saw at least Robin Amos Santos being able to flash a couple of smiles in that interview. I think she did appreciate the effort that her team was able to put forth. Again, that set three got away from this Hawaii squad, uh, but as they now check off week number two in this 2017 season, what would be the state of this team in your opinion? I would say it's pretty good right now. I'd say that uh, if you look at the head coach, Robin Amos Santos, who has a very high standard, by the way, if you see her smiling after the game, you see her proud of the way her players played with all that passion. She knew that the other team just played better than they did, especially in that third set. Just a bigger, more physical team. That uh, it was pretty obvious that uh, she's pleased with the progress. I think Angelica Yuquis is pleased with the progress. It's just one week at a time. It's a work in progress, that's for sure. Another nationally ranked team coming in on Thursday for the Outrigger Resorts Volleyball Challenge. It is BYU, as Scott mentioned. This is now eight straight matches that Hawaii has lost to nationally ranked opponents dating back to 2015. What will it take to break through, you think, against a team like the Cougars? I think they've just got to take what they learned in playing against UCLA, what they learned playing against uh, Marquette in the five-setter, what they learned playing against San Diego when they were down that night. Just all these what did we learn that night kind of things and then go and then apply it and play better the next time you get a chance to play a big team like BYU. And I think Hawaii will do that, but it's going to, you know, short turnaround. They have to take the day off tomorrow by NCAA rules. And so they only have Tuesday, Wednesday to get ready. And then I think she was blaming Dave Shoji for the scheduling, wasn't yeah, she there? Yeah, that was a little <laughs> shot at Dave. Yeah, that was a little shot at Dave for sure. Uh, Hawaii falls to two and four on the season. Utah improves to five and one. That will do it for us. Another weekend of volleyball in the books. And on this occasion, 22nd ranked Utah with a four set win over the Rainbow Wahine. Don't forget about the post game show. For Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Until next time, everybody, we bid you aloha from the Stan Sheriff Center.